Okay, we're on part four of the first quarter study guide for the exam. So what was the Columbian Exchange and what effect did it have on the native people of the Americas? When you look at this is the old world, Europe, okay, and this is the new world, the Americas. Here are all the things that are going to come from the Americas over here to the old world. So you get a lot of vegetable items. Um, the like exception would be like turkeys, but you can see you get squash, you get potatoes, you get tomatoes, corn, and tobacco. And remember, tobacco is going to be the crop that really saves the colony of Jamestown. Now these goods go over here to the old world. What the old world is going to send over here is a lot of meat products, like a lot of meat things. So you're going to get cattle, sheep, pigs, and you'll get horses. So these are things that they didn't have over here. Remember, in uh, the South American area, it's really mountainous, so um, they have llamas and they have guinea pigs. So they don't really have a lot of meat items, and that's kind of why you had, you know, cannibalism in the new, well, in the new world or the Americas. Some things that they're definitely going to get uh, that are horrible will be the diseases that get spread. So smallpox is probably the one that's the most deadly, uh, but you get all these other diseases as well, like measles, the flu, um, typhus. So you have all kinds of different diseases that the Americas have never been exposed to. And so it's like a baby being exposed to the flu. They're going to get it. And because their immune system is so weak, because they've never been exposed to this, um, they die. And you're looking at almost 90% of the population loss as a result of the contact between this old world and the new world. And this is a depopulation of the Americas. Question 28 is how do the cultural diffusion of technology from the Middle East lead to the age of exploration? When the Crusades happen, those European knights go into the Middle East to try and get Jerusalem back from the Muslims, uh, but they don't, okay, it's not a successful um, journey. And there, there was like five or six Crusades, okay? So as they do this, um, but they do take things back, you know, all, all soldiers do. So one of the things they take back is the compass, the astrolabe, and better te uh, mapping techniques. They also take books back. And so basically what the Crusades allows is the regaining of information that had been lost to the West. Because in the Middle East and in India and stuff, they had still the text from ancient Rome and ancient Greece. So that's going to be stuff that they bring back. And what this is going to do, this is the astrolab. What it's going to do is this is going to allow you to measure where you are along the horizon. And so because you can measure yourself, you can go out on that deep ocean blue and you know, you don't get lost. Um, same thing with the compass. It's going to be able to help you navigate better in the, in the open ocean. Question 29 is what geographic region did the Spanish conquistadors decimate? Decimate means destroy. So all this red is the Spanish. And so that is the areas where they're going to be in contact with. And that is pretty much the areas that they kind of destroy. Some of it is because, well, most of it is because of the disease factor, um, but then the brutal treatment of the Spanish conquistadors on the native people, to the, to the native people, is another reason. So Central and South America. Remember what I told you guys previously, when you worked in the silver mine and you were a native, about seven years. That was your life expectancy. So on the map, you have the label of the following items, where our Aztec Empire and our Incan Empire so Mexico for our Aztec Empire, remember Camp Pip, so Cortez, Aztecs, Mexico, and then the Pip part, Pizarro, the Incans, Peru, and this is about where it would be. 31 is which European country became wealthy due to the influx of silver in their economy? And it's Spain. Remember, they're coming over here, Spain's coming here for God, gold, and glory. Well, they don't really find gold. They find silver, but because they're bringing so much silver back over to the old world, to Spain, to Ferdinand and Isabella over here, um, you're going to have everybody kind of looking at them and getting a little jealous, particularly England, and they're going to get in on this age of exploration. They just get in a little later than the other countries. 32 is name the type of governments and any documents of the following colonies. So we talked about Plymouth and we talked about the Pilgrims. And remember, the pilgrims are creating uh, the Mayflower Compact as they come over here. And it's a direct democracy. One man, one vote. 
the Bay Colony, the Massachusetts Bay Colony, that's our Puritans, and they are going to have a direct democracy. So one man, one vote. And they're going to do that in town hall meetings. Now, how the um, pilgrims actually do their voting is in town meetings. Okay, so, but that's what the Mayflower Compact pretty much set up was we're all going to come together, we're all going to agree on what's best for the colony, and that's how we'll vote. Those two documents, those two things become pretty crucial when you're looking at the United States government and how it is set up. Connecticut, that self-governing, that independent colony, they're going to have an indirect democracy, and it's the fundamental orders. That, too, becomes important when you look at our beginning government. Now, we have an indirect democracy for the United States government. We have a House of Representatives, we have a U.S. Senate, and that is an indirect. You and I vote on people who then vote on all the issues for us. Virginia is going to have an indirect democracy as well, and they're going to have the House of Burgesses. All these things are very important uh, when we get into like the Constitution and how our government is set up because our founding fathers looked at what worked, and this is what worked in the colonies. You've had this now for over 100 years, some of them a little bit longer than that. So when you're thinking about a government that you would like, why not use these? You know, they, they worked, okay? So the next question you had was 33, and it was comparing indentured servants to slaves. So an indentured servant is a white European who came over here and who agreed to work for a number of years, a contracted number of years, and then they were freed. Basically, they worked to pay off the debt. It cost a lot of money to come here to the new world, and if you didn't have the money, you would see if someone over here would sponsor you, and they would sponsor you, and as you came over, you incurred the debt. Once you come to the Americas, they're going to have you work. They could have you work in their fields, in their house, whatever. But normally it's five to seven years, and then you're free. Slaves, however, are going to come from Africa, and they are complete property. So you actually have a piece of paper, a title, a deed on a human being. And when they have children, their children will be born into slavery and would also be property. So indentured servants go free. Slaves never go free. Um, and remember, part of the reason why they started going to slaves is it's easier to pick out a runaway slave than it is a runaway indentured servant. And we looked at two primary sources in the Arab book where we looked at a runaway ad for an indentured servant and a runaway ad for slaves. So 34 on the map is like identify where the Spanish, French, Dutch, and English will explore and settle and what areas did kind of overlap, okay? So when you look at Spain, um, pretty much central South America, so this area, not this area, um, Brazil is actually going to be controlled by Portugal. The French are going to be up here in blue, so pretty much Canada. The Dutch, you're going to shade green. And then the English, uh, which the Dutch are like New York, okay, but they called it New Netherlands. England's going to beat them up and take New Netherlands, and they're going to now have over that green spot kind of like orange uh, because the English are going to settle along the North American coastline right here on the East Coast, okay? Not Florida because Spain, you see I have it, Spain still controls Florida. All right, the next question is 35. What is considered to be the most important item in the triangular trade? And what is the portion of the trip that brought them from Africa to the Americas known as? So the most important part on the triangular trade route is the slave part. So this is the middle passage. So you had your sugar, your tobacco, your cotton sent from here from the colonies over here to England. And so they would take that raw material and they would refine it, make something of it. You can't do anything with cotton, so they make a t-shirt from it. So from that t-shirt, they send it down here to the African trademarks where they pick up slaves. So you have your slave catchers, your slave traders here. And so they're going to take those textiles, that's what a t-shirt is now, rum and any manufactured good, a lot of iron and stuff. And so they're going to pick up slaves, they're going to bring them here to the Caribbeans, and then they're going to come here to the Americas, okay? 60% um, of slaves go down to South America because of the brutal treatment on the sugarcane plantations and then, uh, you know, in the beginning of the silver mines. 
So what country defeated the Spanish Armada and when? England does it, and it's in 1588. And here is Queen Elizabeth I, and you can see she's even boasting about it back here in her pictures. Pictures tell a lot. They tell you that she's obviously pretty wealthy. She's young. She's rich. Um, and she's telling you all that in this painting. So don't just look at it and say, you know, why has she got this little, like, dolly thing around her? It actually is representing her power and her prestige. And she's got the crown right there in case you doubted it. So 37, what was Ben Franklin's purpose in creating this cartoon? And what is the name of his proposed plan? This is the Albany Plan of Union. So this is during the French and Indian War. In the French and Indian War, the American colonies are being attacked by the American Indians and by the colonial French. Because they're being attacked, um, the colonies act as separate units. They don't act as one. So they're not the United States of America. They're not the United Colonies of the Americas. They're just colonies on their own. And so he tried to get the colonies to join together in a unified government in defense against the alliance that the French and the American Indians had. So we call it the Albany Plan of Union. This becomes something that they'll think back again on later uh, when we have the American Revolution. So these little like parts of the snake are the different colonies. And he says, look, you can be split up and you can be easily targeted and destroyed. Or we can come together and for mutual defense and defeat the colonial French and the American Indians and win this war and not be beat up as badly as we were. Nobody listens to his plan, so it didn't work. 38, what is another name for King Philip's war? It's Medicom. And the British call him King Philip in jest. They're making fun of him. Um, so it's his real name is Medicom. And Medicom is going to lead a war against the English settlers uh, because he's getting a little upset and he's getting worried about the brutal treatment and the fact that the English just keep coming further and further inland and taking American Indian land. So 39, explain the outcome of the war fought by Medicom. Medicom loses, um, and the English continue to hate the American Indians. Because of things that go on with Medicom's war, our King Philip's war, um, the English settlers, the American colonists, they become very vicious towards the American Indians. When they kill Medicom, they cut his head off and put it on a spike, okay, on a pole, and they carry it from town to town. When you do things like that, um, you are dehumanizing someone. You're, you're making them not a human. And that's how they're going to start kind of more or less being on a continuous basis to our American Indians. And that is how, as time goes on, when the United States becomes the United States, we're going to see some very brutal treatment uh, with towards the American Indians. So... He is actually going to be fighting up here um, in the New England area, and that is, he, he loses. They are able to bring up enough forces. So number 40, what was the economic benefit for Great Britain from their colonies? It's raw materials. And remember, these southern colonies, this is slave numbers. This is how many slaves they had. The reason why they have so many slaves is they're making large plantations of, you know, five, 600 acres, if not more. And they need a lot of workers. They need 100-plus workers. Um, so you're looking at Virginia at almost 188,000 slaves. North Carolina, remember, is the poorer colony. is like 70,000, you might as well say. South Carolina, which is kind of becoming a jewel. You know, you got here, you got Virginia, which is their best one. But South Carolina is also a rich colony because it does have that port of Charleston, but it has things that it grows like rice and indigo, and those are big crops. So when you look at Georgia, remember they set it up as kind of a buffer, a speed bump for the Seminoles and the Spanish down here. So they protect these colonies, and you can see why they would. This is where their money is coming from. Number 41 is what country originally claimed the present-day area of New York and who eventually took control of that area. So the country that originally claimed our New York that we know today is the Netherlands or the Dutch. This is actually where the Netherlands are in Europe. You know, a lot of people are confused about it. It's just a, it's states. 
but they make up the Netherlands, kind of like the United States of America. There's 50 states, and it makes up the United States.